Hey y'all, we're getting more into the meat and potatoes of algebra here with reciprocals and multiplicative inverses. Ooh, that sounds so complicated. Anyway, reciprocal is the same thing basically as a multiplicative inverse. Remember what an inverse is? Like multiplication is the inverse of division and addition is the inverse of subtraction and so on. A number times its inverse. In other words, let's say you have a number, uh, I don't know, let's go three eighths. The inverse of three eighths would be eight thirds, right? What if you multiply those two fractions together? What would you get as an answer? One, right? 24 divided by 24. Or you could just cancel out and go, okay, let's just one over one is one. Okay. So number times its inverse is one. That is going to be important later on. So keep that filed away. Let's do a couple of examples, okay? Multiplicative inverses of these. In other words, you tell me, what would you times seven thirteenths by to get yourself one? The answer is, 13 over seven, right? Okay, what would you times negative one eighth by to get yourself a one, a positive one, okay? So you need to take a negative one eighth and multiply it by a negative, right? Because a negative times a negative is a positive. We're trying to get one, a positive one, don't forget, all right? Positive one. So you would multiply negative one eighth by negative eight. If you wanted to say over one, that's okay. Same thing, right? Okay, what if you had Five. What would you multiply five by to get one? Well, if you wanted to think of five as this, you could. What would you multiply that by to get yourself one? And the answer is one over five, right? Just the inverse. And that's it. And we're going to use that again. Don't forget that. We're going to use that a lot this year, knowing that. Okay. Okay. Well, this you want to make sure you write down. This is called order of operations. At some point in history, I don't know if there was an actual time, uh, the scientists or many scientists of the world decided to standardize uh, the way they wrote equations and, and different formulas and things like that. Um, I don't know, maybe somebody was doing chemistry in France or something and somebody in, I don't know, who knows, uh, Germany or something. Oh, look, here's the formula, go ahead, you know, and then, oh, okay, well, I did this, <laughs> okay, like, wah, wah, why did my, you know, lab blow up and my, you know, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And, the answer is, wait, you should have added here. Well, no, there was a multiplication sign too. Like, no, no, you have to add first, and then you multiply this part, and maybe you multiply first, and then, okay, we gotta figure this out, so everybody does the same thing. Okay, so they did, and this is the order that uh, operations happen in, in arithmetic, algebra, and so on. So P stands for, you just go ahead and write these down if you need to, parentheses, parentheses. E stands for exponents. Those are things like, you know, five squared, is 25 or something like that. Multiplying and dividing, you can kind of clump those together if you want to. That's M and D, and I'm sure you know what these stand for. You can clump together addition and subtraction if you want to, you can just go left to right if you want. So just make sure, because you could get some drastically different answers um, if you don't do them that exact way. Well, let's do one for example. Well, here's two of them. They look kind of the same, don't they? Look at that. I got a five, I got a plus, I got a three, I got a times four, right? They're exactly the same. They must be, right? Well, wait a minute. Uh, P is first, parentheses. Okay, so let's do that first here. I got three times four is 12. Five plus 12, 17. Okay, doctor, let's pour 17 milligrams of, you know, sodium, you know, benzoate or whatever into this baby formula. Okay, Gerber's. Mmm, okay. All right. The baby looks healthy. Wonderful. Okay. The other doctor goes, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this here. Five plus uh, three times four, we have, let's see, five plus three is eight times four, uh, 32. Oh, this is going to be different, although these are both done correctly. But uh, that's going to be, that's a different, different setup totally than this, okay? But if you had this right here, let's say you had this, okay? And doctor number one went, Hmm, there's no parentheses, but wait a second. Should I add first or multiply first? Oh, well, I'll just do what I feel. Five plus three is eight times four, 32. That's how much, you know, sodium benzoate I'm gonna put in the baby, you know, food. The kid eats it, and all of a sudden, okay. He grows a, I don't know, a year out of his forehead or something, I don't know. Okay, so you can see how this can be. You can look at this and go, gee, which one do I do first? Well, the answer to that is you multiply first. Multiplication and division, oops, comes before addition and subtraction. You're, you're going to use this pretty quickly. Okay. All right. Pause and copy. 
and let's do this together. And it's going to take a little bit of, uh, you know, manipulating. And I strongly encourage you, and again, be very careful with addition and subtraction. That is the meat and potatoes of algebra. you got to get this down. So I would strongly suggest that you take several attempts at this and just do little steps one at a time at first to make sure you get these things correctly. If it takes you 15 extra seconds to do it, just do it. So you don't have to do it all over again with, you know, at the end. Oh, I missed eight problems, 12 problems, you know, whatever. Just do it right the first time. Okay, let's go ahead and do first multiplication. Okay, and we see a multiplication right here, and we see one right there. So let's just go ahead and do those first. All right, so we have five times three is 15. I'm gonna repeat the plus four. Now I'm gonna do this. Uh, negative two times four is negative eight, right? If I add a negative eight, that's the same thing as subtracting eight, right? There you go, <clears throat> okay? Now it becomes easy. You can do this in any order you want. You, can, you know, it's all addition and subtraction, but you can just, I might as well just go left to right. 15 plus four is 19. 19 minus eight is 11. And feel free to do this a step at a time. Don't try to do it all in your head. Just take 15 extra seconds and do it and get it right, all right? Pause and copy this one as well. Okay, well, let's take a look. We have this and we have this. These are multiplication problems. So let's do those first and leave the negative four alone. Leave it alone, all right? Negative six times a positive three. Well, negative times a positive is a negative. Just rewrite the negative four the way it is. Just leave it, okay? Now, plus five times two is 10, so plus 10, all right? Now we can just go left to right. Now, this is important, don't forget. Negative 18 minus four. Don't forget, these are both the same sign. So you ignore the, you know, the negatives. You just add the absolute values, right? 18 plus four is 22. But since they're both negative, you'll take that as a negative, plus 10, okay? Now our last part of this is adding two numbers that have a different sign, which means immediately you should know you're going, okay, absolute values, 22 minus 10 this time. So 22 minus 10 is 12. But which one of these numbers is farther away from zero? This one is. So that has a negative, which means your answer is a negative as well. There you go, okay. All right, pause and copy this one too. Here's a real doozy. Okay, this is definitely one you want to take and piece apart little by little, you know, especially if you're you know, kind of new at doing these, makes it much easier, okay? What I would do, maybe you might even go like this. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and I'm doing that first. I'm gonna focus on multiplying, do that first. Because you don't have any parentheses, you don't have any exp exponents yet. We're multiplying and dividing. Okay, so we have five times four is 20. Okay, just go ahead and do, oh, minus, minus nine is 11. No, don't do that. Do this first all in one lump, okay? Nine times two is 18. Just go ahead and copy down your plus six. Minus, then we have this as a big clump, right? Seven times two is 14. Okay, that's what I do. Now, again, when we add and subtract, you know, positive and negative numbers, you can go left to right if you want to, or you can just kind of clump together all the positives and all the negatives, and, you know, you can do it that way. Let me just do it clumping way, I guess you could call it, now, just so we can go ahead and get this, uh, do it a little bit different way. Here's a 20, right? And here's a six, those are both positives, right? Okay, well that's obviously 26, right? Okay, now we have a negative 18 and a negative 14. And you know that if they're both negatives, you forget about the negatives, add the absolute values, 18 plus 14, 32, and give it the same sign as both of these. So not 32, but negative 32. Now we end up with 26 minus 32. And again, you should, your brain should be telling you at this point, after so many times of doing it, that you have two numbers, they're different signs, you ignore the uh, symbol, in the, the, the negative or positive, and you subtract now, okay? In other words, we have a 26. We're adding with a negative 32, okay? So they're different signs, so absolute values, 32 minus 26, so you're gonna subtract them. That gives you six. But negative 32 is farther away from zero than 26 is, which means this is a negative six, okay? All right? Okay, one last thing, one question I'm asked a lot is, um, where did you get those dumb glasses? Oh, sorry. Another question I'm asked a lot is, 
when do you multiply it and when do you add? And when I'm, you know, driving down the highway and some guy's rolled down his window and like yells that question, I try to keep both hands on the wheel, or at least like one hand on my wheel and one when I'm texting, you know, and things like that. Just kidding. Okay. Two hands on my texting. Right. When do you multiply and when do you add? The answer is make it easy on yourself. Be very deliberate and, and very clear what you do, and it'll all fall into place, okay? So copy this thing down and look at that. I mean, that's just, it looks like a mess, okay? Here's the, here's the okay, let me, just let me just take this part right here. This will make it all clear to you. You can look at this and go, oh, that's going to be 7 minus 2 times 6, okay? You can look at it that way if you want to. In other words, uh, you can go... 2 times 6, you can, you can fiddle with that and go, okay, I'm just going to copy down my 7. I'm going to copy down my minus. I'm going to go, you know, 2 times 6 is 12. Okay, I'll do that part right there. Fine. That's wonderful if you want to do it that way. Okay? You can also go like this. I'll do it over here just to the side. You can go, I have a 7 here. I'm going to leave it there. Now I'm going to focus on this part right here. What is negative 2 times 6? You tell me. What's, what's the answer? What's negative 2 times 6? Negative 12, right? Does that look vaguely familiar to you? Okay. As long as you're correct in what you're doing, you're okay. You're okay. Don't get too hung up about it. Uh, you might find yourself a couple of times making mistakes and looking at things. If that happens, look at your uh, solutions manual. Look very carefully at the steps that they've provided for you. Those are a huge help in determining, oh, oh, oh I made a mistake right there. So look at that part right there. But let's do this together. And, uh, you know, again, we're going to, let's go ahead and just, let's get to where we're, I'm, I'm doing the multiplication here. Let's, let's kind of focus on that. And if you want to go ahead and write things like those red lines, go ahead and do it. Anything to make things easier and clear and simple for you. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do it. I'm going to copy my 7. I'm going to copy my minus. 2 times 6 is 12. Done. Okay, I'm going to copy my minus. And uh, let's take a look at this. What is 5 times negative 3? Negative 15, right? So let's just put it there. Negative 15. Okay. Now I'll take my minus and do it. Okay, well, what is 8 times negative 4? It's negative 32, right? There we go. Okay, now let's work on that. 7 minus 12, well, we'll come to that in a second. Okay, now you tell me what's the opposite of negative 15. And the answer is positive 15, right? Okay, and again, what's the opposite of negative 32? Positive 32, right? Okay. All right, so we'll, I'm, not, I'm not even going to bother to even do that, but let me show you something else very quickly. Notice that this is positive 15 and positive 32. If you wanted to, you could have taken this part right here, and, and instead of saying, I'm, I'm going to put my minus down here and then do this part, you could have just done the entire thing at once. What is negative 5 times negative 3? Positive 15, right? What is negative 8? times negative 4. Positive 32, right? Same thing. So you're okay with whatever way you do that. As long as you're consistent, you do it correctly. So anyway, okay. All right. Let's take the practice set and uh, pause it and go ahead and try uh, problems. Let's just go ahead and do, um, no, let's do all of them and come together. So pause it. Okay, A is negative 100. Two. Negative 102. All right, because you have basically 18 minus 120. That's how you get that. All right, pause it and try B. Okay, B is 9. You should have 15 plus 2 minus 8. 15 plus 2 minus 8 is 9. All right, pause it and try C. C is 5, and on your paper, you should have 8 minus 6 minus 7 plus 10. Make sure you're doing multiplication first. Don't just rant, don't just blindly go left to right. Look and see where your multiplication is. If you need to, underline those and get those done first. Okay, pause it and try D. All right, D 
is 3. You should have 13. And then negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. So you should have 13, then plus 20. And then you should have minus 30. In other words, you should have 33 minus 30 is 3. So there we go. Okay, see you guys next time. Have a great day.